Hello everybody, a big welcome from Dimitri and from me to this week's, hello, to this week's Easy 11 Plus Live lesson. It's fantastic to have you here and this week we're talking about verbal reasoning. I can see the chat coming in. Um, thank you Zach's Gaming Channel for advocating for likes and please also subscribe to the channel. It means you find out about what I'm doing and it really supports me. The other thing you might be interested in with this channel is channel memberships, which is a bit different from subscribing. It's sort of the next level up. Um, and if you pay a small amount each month to become a member, you get access to loads of stuff. You get sort of custom badges and stuff for chat and so on but also I'm having my thumb bitten off but also you get loads and loads and loads of videos that I've put together and put together each week helping you with specific schools so I've got question by question walkthroughs for this little savage is biting my hand Rah! for St Paul's Girls School for Solihull for City Boys for GL and CEM exams uh, what else am I going on here King Edward School Birmingham Seven Oaks um, Solly Hall, I've said Dame Alice Owens, Kendrick School, that's a new thing I put up this week. Lots of stuff for Kendrick School. Get on, boy, calm down. Calm down, you're a YouTube star. Enjoy it. They're your fans, look at them. All your fans coming in. Um, uh, shout out for a cat named Minerva across the street, says um, Anna Rudder. Um, welcome to Chinielu, who's new. Fantastic. Big welcome to all the new people. That's enough waffle for me. Don't forget these life lessons are every Tuesday evening at six o'clock. Let's get cracking with the lesson. Dimitri's off. What can I do? Okay, let's get going. So, oh, my monitor says it's about to turn off. It's just going wonderfully today, isn't it? But the microphone's working. You're here. Dimitri was here. Things are okay in the world. So here's the, here's the first question we're going to look at today. Um, and this is quite a specific kind of question, but it's the kind of thing that's always coming up in verbal reasoning exams. And the thing about this kind of thing can come up in grammar school exams, can come up in independent school exams, this kind of thing can come up in online um, exams like the pretest. Um, so it's really, really, really useful to know how to do stuff like this. So, as with so much verbal reasoning, so much reasoning, it's about having a really good system. If you just try and see the answer, you go, well, that's clearly the answer, that's clearly the answer, you're likely to make a mistake, however bright you are. So let's behave as though we're not that bright, uh, which I won't find too difficult, and let's see how we can do this systematically. So if you wrote these five words backwards, then, um, I don't want to exit full screen, go away, notification. Uh, then arrange them in alphabetical order. Which of them would come last, first, fourth, second, third? So note that we aren't supposed to write them in order. We're supposed to write the relevant one next to the relevant question. Always read the question, people. So we have to write them backwards, then arrange them in alphabetical order. Which of them would come? Now, obviously, that doesn't mean write poser, then slur, then scour, then lemur, then odor. It isn't asking us to reverse the order of the word. It's clearly asking us to write each word backwards, okay? So, one very simple approach would be to go through and write each word backwards. But let's have a look at the words first. We're going to write them backwards. We can see they all end with an R. The penultimate letter, that's the letter before last in each case, is a U, okay? That applies to all of them. So the first letter where things change is the middle letter where these are, well, the third letter from the end because they aren't all five letter words. So let's go that far. So this one, last letter R, penultimate letter U, and then we got O. Sorry, that is a U, honestly. I find it really hard to write on this tablet, as uh, established channel members will know. Um, who's saying, sorry, I'm late. Nathan is saying, sorry, I'm late. Nathan, it's wonderful to have you, and you're not particularly late. And I haven't, have been known to be late for my own lessons, so uh, don't worry too much. Um, this one, R-U-M, we're just writing backwards the last three letters of each word. Just to save a little bit of time, help us focus as well. Are you O? R-U-L and R-U-E. Okay, so we can see the first two letter as all letters are always the same. What about the third letter though? So E is the lowest in the alphabet. So let's label that one, okay? And then what's gonna come next? L or M, you know your alphabet, it's gonna be L. And then we've got M and then we've got R, R-U-O and R-U-O. So which of these comes before the other? So we need to add another letter, R-U-O-D and R-U-O-C. So now we can see that this one comes next and this one is last. And now we just need to fill them in. Which one comes last? That's number five. Now, the question is not entirely clear. If you wrote these five words backwards, then arrange them in alphabetical order, which of them would come? So are we supposed to write the words written backwards or the words in their original form? Now, you could blame me who wrote the question for being unclear, but in fact, I copied this wording from um, 
uh, from a real exam, so it was unclear in the first place. I think the clear implication backwards then arrange them, what does them refers to refer to? These five words. We're talking about the original five words. If you wrote the reversed words in the answer box, I think I would still give you the marks, but you might not get them in an exam. So let's go with the original words, which becomes last, number five, that's odor. Odor, okay? And then first, that's over here, number one, poser, which I think is a great word. Um, if you don't know what it means, look it up. Fourth, it'd be a good word to use in your creative writing, as long as you use it appropriately. Uh, fourth, scour. Second, slur and third lemur excuse my handwriting again as i say my, i'm bad at writing at the best of times uh, and writing on a glass screen makes it something like the worst of times okay so this is not a difficult question i'm sure that anybody who spent time on it got it right however no i'm not sure because i bet somebody just plunged in and made a silly mistake somewhere the important thing with a question like this is to be systematic but what i'm trying to show you here is that you can be systematic and still save time you can work with the last three letters so you don't need to write the whole word in reverse and then it's less confusing and then you just add another letter in when you need it and again the reason we're working with the last three is because we've looked at the words and seen that the last two letters are always the same u and r okay i hope that makes sense um, what I try to teach in these lessons is a way of thinking about um, exam problems that you can transfer to all sorts of other question styles, all kinds of other problems. Um, and that's what I want you to take out of this. Okay, fill in the gap so that the word on the right has the same or almost the same meaning as the word on the left. I'm going to quadruple underline this word here because you would not believe how easy it is when you're under pressure in an exam to go, oh, look, it's an opposite words question, an antonyms question, and to search through looking for opposites and just get stuck and waste time. And then about a minute later, you look back at the question and go, oh, I was supposed to look for synonyms, words with the same meaning. Such a common kind of exam mistake. So take the time with the question to make sure that you have read it properly and correctly before you leap in to looking at the options. And the example should help you too. We have rest and we have repose. Um, think about parts of speech, by the way. Rest, it could be a noun. I'm having, a, I'm having some rest. I'm having some... Mm, that, I mean, not that very good context. It was a time of rest. It was a time of repose. You have to go a little bit classical to make a plausible sentence out of this. But what about a verb? Um, to rest, to repose. I rest on my bed, I repose on my bed. Okay. Um, repose is not that common a word, but I, it's in the category of words that many people doing the 11 plus might know. But don't panic if you don't, it's only the example. One other thing though I want to point out here, and yes I'm spending time on the example because it will cue you up for things um, come down. Someone says they're from Watford, so is my wife. So it's a fantastic place to come from. Um, right, so the thing about rest is we've spoken about it as a verb, but it can also be a noun. The rest, so um, it can be, sorry, it can be a noun with a totally different meaning. That's what I mean. So uh, you take those sweets and I will take the rest. The rest of the sweets and then what would be a synonym for rest remain the the, the, um, the remainder for example the leftovers something like that um, so you have to be attentive to possible different meanings right right let's think about it in that way firstly is there any other way of pronouncing pronouncing the word bright I can't pronounce the word pronounce that isn't a good start no it's bright are there any different meanings for the word bright um, this light that's in front of me up there that you cannot see is very bright it's also very hot but um i can see that um i can see that best boy in the comments who's apologizing very politely for being late is very bright okay so the word bright can have those meanings they're the ones that i can think of so we need to consider both of those so similar meanings for bright meaning uh, with lots of light and bright meaning intelligent okay and we've got three letters missing here. And I don't see anything obvious jumping out at me if I'm in the exam with this. I think bright like a light. So I think, you know, um, radiant, illuminating. 
dazzling, um, I think bright as an intelligent, so I think smart, sharp, nothing's coming to mind to me. So if you're in this situation in the exam and you're not doing some computer exam where well, when you go forward, you can't go back, what you should do at this point is the most intelligent thing of all, which is not waste any more time on it and move on. So we're going to do that, okay? We're going to go through the rest and then come back to it um, because I want to show you that in action. Yes, of course I know what the answer is, but let's pretend I don't. Okay, stupid, um, which is something that no um, easy 11 plus channel viewer has ever been. However, if you want to be the among the least stupid of easy 11 plus viewers, then of course you should become a channel member because that's where the truly intelligent people lurk. Ah, coffee. That's what I need to enable me to feign intelligence. Right, stupid. D oh, hang on. So, st this really is crying out for a vowel. Addy, Eddy, Idi, idiot, an idiot is stupid. Idiot, idi, idiotic. Okay. Now that might have been an obvious one, but often in an exam when you're under stress, things that might be obvious outside the exam are no longer obvious. But so what did I do? I looked at the D there and I thought that's almost certainly kind of a vowel in front of it. Try it with consonants. P -d, p -d, s -d, t -d, t -d, t -d. Nah, you want a vowel almost certainly. So then, with vowels, of course, you've got a very short list to work through. So I went through my very short list of vowels, and once I got that, the rest of it fell into place. And I just had the word stupid, stupid, stupid going in the back of my mind, um, and that helped me to pin down what the answer was. Okay? Um, well done to JPM Gamer, who's already ahead of the game, on the next one. So, advance. Oh, by the way, um, as advanced channel members, those of you in the live comments have already worked out that to take part in the live chat, you need to be a subscriber to the channel. Um, that is, of course, a cunning way to encourage people to subscribe. I'm not going to be hypocritical and pretend otherwise. Um, so if you'd like to take part in the live chat, then please click the subscribe button. And of course, please stay subscribed so you can benefit from everything that the channel has to offer. Uh, well, most of it. Right. Advance. Advance, advance, advance. I really, really thinking of that as a verb. Um, I advance into the classroom and take my place. Um, the army's advance was hindered by the snow. I'm just coming up with rubbish that comes into my mind. But this is what you do in an exam. You're just playing with things in your head. One of the biggest mistakes you can make in an exam hall, exam hall is to get too rigid and think, oh, I need to get the answers. Because actually your most intelligent thoughts will often come where your mind is quite relaxed and you let it wander a bit. You kind of daydream about the problems a bit. You think about silly sentences using the word advance and then maybe you'll get there. Um, so, um, advance. Uh, I can't think of other pronunciations. I don't think this could be another part of speech. You could have an advanced Thing. That could be an adjective, but this is advance, it's a verb. So to advance to per per per. Okay, ending with an S, um, to advance to, mm, let's imagine, I mean, after P could be almost anything, unfortunately. I want to go after a G. Um, might be a vowel. Pra, e, poke, proge. I'm sort of playing with the sound of the word. E, pogo, but often, I often have an R after um, an, a G. Grief, grudge, ingratiate. I'm just coming up with examples off the top of my head. Let's try that. Let's try an R. Well, I really need a vowel here. A, a programs, pro programs, hang on, prog, progress. To advance is to progress. So I actually got there via the wrong word. I tried my R after the G because that's a really common letter combination. And then the gr gave me just an idea for what came before and suddenly it fell into place. So again, it's about having a nice free mind and letting ideas pop in. Indispensable. My viewers are indispensable to me. Literally so, because were you not here, I would be talking to myself and to uh, just to a computer monitor. Um, and then I might have some questions to ask myself, which would be it's making a kind of circular argument here, because that would be even worse if I was talking to the monitor and asking myself questions. Indispensable. So something's indispensable, clearly an adjective. Um, it means it's really important. You can't do without it. It's really essential. 
let's play with that. Um, v, now we can do with letter combinations. Um, after a V, it's going to have to be a vowel, isn't it? R, V, P, no, it's going to be a vowel. A, E, I, O, U. V, 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 then that doesn't necessarily wouldn't necessarily be pronounced vi. It might be pronounced vi, violent, for example, vi, vital, indispensable. So again, the different sounds of things are are vital uh, to our considerations. But um, ch disguise. Um. Well, disguise. It could be a noun. My disguise. I could also disguise something. Here it doesn't really matter. Either way, it is an example of, I bet you've got this, camouflage. Someone in the comments has set me a challenge. Pronounce um, pseudo pseudo hyperparathyroidism. In there. Thank you for the challenge, IG. Pseudo pseudo hyperparathyroidism. Um, good. That makes me feel a little bit less than I might otherwise. Right, we left this and now we're gonna come back to it. Um, so someone who's bright, um, so what can we do with this? AS, it might be an ASS, that's a common thing. Assure, assure, assume, ass, hmm. Or it could be a consonant, like what about spire? That really seems to fit, asp, asp, with a hard sound, as. Ast. Now, if you don't know the word, you won't get it. But as you play around with these things and you've given a break, you've looked at the other things, you come back to it and then you maybe think, oh yeah, astute. Now the thing about this one is, if you don't know the word and if it doesn't pop into your head, it, it's almost impossible to work it out. Yes, you can say there's almost certainly going to be a consonant before the E. Almost certainly it could be a two E ending or an I E but very likely to be a consonant. But apart from that, I mean, it could be anything pretty much after the S. It could be anything in the middle. Um, and so this is one of those ones where, as I say, if you're in an exam, we've got the options on the paper in front of you. If you can skip one and you don't see it straight away, it's better to skip and save yourself time than get stuck staring at the page. And in fact, if you skip and you simply can't come back and do it, you just can't work it out. It's much better to skip a question and lose that mark, but have the option of coming back to it later. So, no, that's not what I'm saying. It's better to skip the question and lose that mark and get more marks later because you didn't waste the time than to stare at it for five minutes and then get the right answer. You have to be strategic in your exams. Don't be the kind of person who can't bear to lose a mark and so ends up losing 10 marks at the end because they never finished it. Right, we're halfway through the questions here and I'm going to take a short break to show you a very short 1 minute and 20 second video that Dimitri and I put together earlier. Um, yes, it's a plug, but I hope it might be interesting to quite a lot of people here. So sit back and enjoy. It's September, but before you get too depressed about the weather turning grey and school restarting, that also means that it's the perfect time for the 11 Plus Lifeline Big September Sale. And that means that I'm going to be offering a really big discount on new 11 Plus Lifeline memberships. The sale's going to be running from Friday through to Sunday evening. It will finish at the end of Sunday, so don't miss it. On Friday morning, I'm going to be sharing another video here with the offer code that you can use for your special discount. So look out for that video on Friday morning. 11 Plus Lifeline turns five this year, which means it's been around for as many years as Dimitri has been around months. 11 Plus Lifeline members get really high quality 11 Plus practice papers every week, covering an enormous range of exam styles and question types. Yeah, Dimitri with full example answers for every question and my famous really detailed walkthroughs of exactly what to do in order to ace your 11 plus exam. Platinum members of 11 plus Lifeline can also send me work for marking. I provide you with really detailed line by line advice on your work, offering encouragement and thorough guidance on how to do it even better and impress the examiners. No, Dimitri, they don't want your feedback. 
thank you for watching that. Um, if you've got any questions about that offer, you can ask me uh, in the comments and you can also write a comment under the video and then I'll definitely see it. Um, oh, thank you to Storytime for the comment. I'm doing my 11 plus in three days. Thank you for your help along the way. Um, sir, which is very polite. Uh, you don't need to call me sir, but obviously um, I appreciate your great courtesy. I don't really feel like a sir. Um, sir Robert. No, I don't see that. Um, uh, fantastic. Um, all the very best of luck to you in your exams. And it's lovely when people take the time to uh, say that I've, you know, this channel has managed to help them because that makes me feel very happy and makes me feel really positive about making more videos and continuing to do these lessons for you. So, um, so great. And story time, the very best of luck. I can't wish good luck to every individual person who says they're doing their exams, but I just happened to see that comment. Amir, good luck for the Kent test in two days. Um, if you haven't already, look at my video on the Kent test from a few weeks ago that you can find in the channel. Right. Uh, oh, someone says, what's the cat's name? The cat is Dmitri, um, which is a Russian name. Um, and um, uh, and he is called Dmitri because he is a Siberian cat, a Siberian forest cat. Um, okay, back to the questions. So we're halfway through. Um, we're going along at a great rate today. Hopefully I'll be able to let you go in plenty of time. Uh, right. So underline the word on the right so that it will belong with the words in either set of brackets. Okay. Belong with. Let's think about what these words do mean and what they don't mean. Okay. Because belong with does mean that the word will in some way be part of that set. It does not mean things including must have the same meaning, must be the same part of speech. We aren't told that. So you need to keep an open mind about how these words might be related, okay? Again, it's what I was saying. Don't get stuck in a channel. Keep your mind nice and loose and relaxed as far as you can. So in the example, attach glue. So this is how I do these, by the way. I look at the first bracket, attach glue. And I go through the ones on the right, which might, what might work. Adhere would work. Endure wouldn't work, okay? Um, it doesn't mean anything like attach or glue. Stick. To stick to something is to glue to something. To fasten to something is also to attach or glue to something. So we've got three left. And now we look at the right-hand two words. Stay, remain, adhere. No, it doesn't mean that. Stay, remain, stay in one place, remain in one place, stick, stick in one place. So that works. So that's almost certainly the answer. Fasten doesn't have the same meaning. And so stick is our answer. And therefore we underline it. So that's the process we're going to be using. Um, by the way, in an exam, if they give you an example, which they often will for reasoning questions in particular, always take the time to think through the example. Because the example is there, it's not just to show you what the question means. It's there to give you a chance to get into the exam setter and the marker's mindset. Okay? And once you're in their mindset, then it's easy to solve the questions because it's, you're just like someone who set them. Fox, whale. Foxes and whales, they're both kinds of animals. If you've got a little bit of zoolo zoological knowledge, you'll know they're both mammals. Um, fox could be a verb, but whale can't be a verb. We're talking about the things here. Fox, whale, rod. A rod is not, to my knowledge, a kind of animal. A wolf is, a bat is, mammal. Could mammal go there? Fox, whale, mammal. Not really. Foxes and whales are kinds of mammals. If you had a set, including the concepts of fox and whale, mammal could describe the whole set, but it wouldn't be a part of that set. So mammal is not an option. If you didn't spot that, you'll still get the answer, but it's worth pointing it out. So we've got wolf or bat. Club stick, is that wolf or bat? Of course, it's bat. A baseball bat, a golf club, a French cricket stick. Are there, any, are there any sport, bat sports where you call it a stick? There must be, but I can't think of one. Maybe someone can tell me. Okay. Um, if, you, you imagine, if you think your imaginary cat gets a shout out, Tiwa, um, then uh, you're imagining things. Um, do, 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 do. Um, Canon Praddy, thanks for the help, Robert, and I'm glad you started this as it helped me so smiley, 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 smiley. Uh, I'm glad it helped you to be so smiley. Um, great. Um, I just pretend to be smiley. I come off these videos at the end and just cry. Um, but you know, I keep up a, 
I keep up a brave face for you guys. Flattening, smoothing. Okay. So these are clearly verbs, participles. Um, there could be other things, but basically, let's not get complicated. Basically, um, I am flattening the handkerchief. I am smoothing the handkerchief. It'd be much nicer if it was a cat, but he has run off. Um, flattening, smoothing. Planing. Now, you might not be familiar with the word planing, but it includes plane. You know what a plane is. It's a big flat area, so to make something a plane. So that does seem to fit, doesn't it? Raising. Okay, that's a funny one. You probably heard the phrase raised to the ground, okay? Um, the air attack raised the factory to the ground. Okay, to give a martial example, but it's the most obvious one I can think of. Um, but look, if you don't know what it means, you just wouldn't cross it out anyway. So we're in the same position. Gloaming. Um, you probably don't know what that word means um, um, because it's a very old-fashioned and unusual word. Look it up. Why not say that? Uh, virtually nobody is going to know the meaning of that here. Um, and we've got evening, making something even. I am evening out the handkerchief. So all the words here are either... Um, you wouldn't rule them out if you knew what they meant, or ones that you're not likely to know the answer to. In fact, if you knew what gloaming meant, you would cross it out here. But let's assume that you don't. Um, apologies if you do. So, now we look at dusk and sunset. Dusk and sunset, planing. The dusk, the sunset, the planing. Hmm. Dusk, the sunset, the raising. Dusk, the so, not though, not that, not that. Dusk, the sunset, the gloaming, maybe. You don't know what it means, though. Let's assume you don't know what it means. So you can't cross it out. Dusk, sunset, evening. So now we've got two options. Evening clearly fits both sets of brackets. Evening out something is flattening out something is smoothing out something. It also fits a second set of brackets. Dusk, the dusk, the sunset, the evening. Um, they're not exactly the same meaning. Dusk and sunset are to do with the way the sun relates to the earth um, and their relative rotations. Um, but um, the, yeah, so you can see that evening matches both sets very well. You don't know about gloaming. And in that situation, the rational choice is to choose the one that you know fits and not just pick one that you've no idea. In fact, gloaming belongs with dusk and sunset, but does not belong with flattening and smoothing. But you can get the answer even if you don't know that. Right, repose, recline, fib. So repose and recline, they're about lying down or resting. Fib, no. Lie, no. Hang on a sec. I just said lying down. To lie, it doesn't just mean telling an untruth. It also means to lie on my back. And I have noticed the second set of brackets. Falsify, deceive. Lie is almost certainly the answer. I just checked the others quickly now. Trick fits the second bracket, does not fit lying down. Extend. I suppose I extend myself when I repose, but it doesn't really mean repose or recline, and it's got nothing to do with a second set of brackets. So lies the answer. So yes, I teach that you should be systematic and go through all the options, but if the answer just pops out at you while you're doing it, that's absolutely fine. But in a question like this, take the time to check the others just in case. Uh, thank you for the uh, request from um, Chinyolu not to spam guys. I agree, please don't spam guys. It is quite annoying, you know, as Anurada says. Okay. Um, direct head, iron, gold. Okay, direct head. So if these are adjectives, the direct root, the um, head, head teacher, it's not exactly working as an adjective in the normal way. Yeah, but they'd have totally different meanings anyway. Um, the, but they can be verbs. I direct the organization. I head the organization. Hmm. I think we're working with verbs here. Okay. I chief the organization. Now, um, to chief something, at least when I was at school, meant to nick it, but only in slang. Uh, so uh, nick is also slang, of course, to steal it. Um, but yeah, unlikely to work here. Tin. I tin it. No, I don't. I awe it. No. I led it. No. Different pronunciations. 
Remember what I said earlier when we were talking about these here, that you have to be very, very alert to different meanings and different pronunciations. I hope I said the latter anyway, because it's important. This can be led or lead. I direct something, I head something, I lead something. They go. It kind of must be the answer, really, because I've ruled out the others. Let's check, though. Iron, gold, lead? Oh, no. Now it is lead. Iron, gold, and lead. Okay? So now we're talking about metals. So this word fits because with one pronunciation, lead, it fits with the first bracket. And with a different pronunciation, lead, it fits with the second second bracket. Now, folks, this is something really important for verbal reasoning tests. This will come up often, that you will be required to face situations where a word can sound differently and you have to be alert to the different phonetic possibilities, shall we say, of a word. And this is an important example of that. If you don't know the word phonetic, it's a very important word. So please go away after the lesson, look it up and use it. Right, last one here. And then we just got one last question type. My tablet here, it's the, it's the um, static charge. It's getting covered in cat hairs. <sighs> more and more settling on it, even though Dimitri's disappeared off. Where has he gone? Is he here? No, he's disappeared off. Just so I don't drag him back into the uh, video. There we are. Okay. Waste garbage. Okay, these are clearly nouns. We're talking about rubbish, aren't we? Hang on, there's rubbish on the right. Is that the answer? Reject, decline, rubbish. I reject it, I rubbish it, I decline it, I rubbish it. No, different meaning, doesn't fit. Sorry, guys. Waste, garbage, object. I mean, waste and garbage do contain objects, but no, nah, clearly not. Waste and garbage and descent. Let's just, to keep this interesting, let's pretend you don't know what descent means, even though you do. So you can't rule that out. Waste and garbage and refuse. So you might be very tempted to go, well, refuse has got nothing to do with waste and garbage. So that can't be the answer and it must be whatever descent means. But you would be wrong because you are not thinking about the different sounds of words, which we've already discussed here. Because this word is not only pronounced refuse, but also, drum roll, refuse, which is a word you do know, of course, and it means waste or garbage, okay? Things that are thrown out. Descent does not have anything to do with waste or garbage. Reject, decline, could fit with descent or, ref or refuse, but refuse is the only one that goes with waste and garbage. Now, this is a tricky question because if you don't have any clue about descent or refuse, or refuse, rather, yeah, if you don't know what descent or refuse mean, then you might be stuck. If that happens, do not waste time on the question. Move on, okay? However, if, if you just look at the question initially and think, I don't know some words, still try to work through it logically because you might get there. Uh, one thing else I should say, because I realise at this point that uh, I've just given some very bad advice, okay? Uh, if this was a pre-recorded video, I would edit it now. I'd edit out something I just said. Because, of course, with a question like this, you should not just move on. If you can't find the answer, reduce the options far as you can and then guess, okay? Because if you can cross out object... Um, or um, object, which doesn't really fit with, yeah, so objects fit waste and garbage. Right? If you cross out objects and you cross out rubbish, that's what I was trying to get at, um, then you've only got a one in two guess between descent and refuse or refuse. Um, and that's a pretty decent guess to try because half the time you'll be right. So with a question like this, don't leave it blank. Always reduce as far as you can and then guess. Whereas with a question like this, if you can't see the answer, then there's not much point guessing because either you know what the answer is or you can't fill in the gaps. So that's a different kind of situation. Okay, the very last kind of question, but these are quite fiddly. If you delete one word, one, only one, the rest can be rearranged to form a sentence that reads naturally and makes good sense. Reads naturally and makes good sense. Every word matters in an exam question or it should. So you might find a sentence that makes sense, but does it make good sense? Well, 
What's the difference? He eats the radiator. It makes sense. You know exactly what it means. It is telling you that he eats the radiator. The words are plain. Does it make good sense? No. A person eating a radiator, or indeed any kind of, you know, um, organism um, individually eating a radiator, is an absurdity. That does not make good sense to me. Yes, the words mean something and there's no grammatical mistake, but you could not say that that makes good sense. So look out for things that work, but are nevertheless not the right answer because they do not make good sense. Omar says, can you do a video on perimeter and area? I must have done videos on, I have done videos on area and, yes, I have covered these things. Um, the, in, the video might not be called perimeter and area. Look through my maths videos for anything to do with shapes and I think you'll find some good questions on these. Oh, and I've also covered this in some algebra videos where there are simple algebra questions dealing with perimeter and algebra and area. Um, but I apologize for, fact, for the fact that things can sometimes be a little bit tricky to find in the channel because I often cover a mix of topics in one video. Um, or topics overlap would be another way of putting it. Okay, feel, hit, I, angry. So what are we going for here? I feel angry. How do we get that? Well, we've got an I here. And I is often a good bet for a starting word for a sentence. So it's a good thing to try. Then you say, I, angry, feel, I, hit, anger, I feel angry. And it falls out like that. If you couldn't get anything like that, then maybe you try a different word at the start. Right, 16. We've got a lot of words here, so let's be frank about this. You sound like some kind of awful politician. Let's be frank about this. That's what you say before telling some whopping great lie. Um, let's, uh, yeah, let's not be frank about this. Let's just work through it. To be straightforward about this, let's put it that way. Um, trying to work through these completely logically is not a good approach. Because by the time you've logically worked out the position of every word, you've done a calculation worthy of a supercomputer and spent about 20 exam times doing it. You're going to need to rely quite a lot on instinct and a kind of feel for what's going on here. Um, a little bit like some spatial reasoning problems where, yes, you can work through them rationally step by step, but if you can see it, it will save you a lot of time. Coffee flame the poor mug into the... Okay, so now we play with some elements. We don't always go for the start. Um, what am I going to do with coffee? I'm going to pour it. So pour the coffee. That might be at the beginning, it might not. Pour the coffee into. Pour the coffee into the... Hang on, I've dealt with almost all of this. I've only got flame and mug left. Pour the coffee into the flame. That makes perfect sense. It doesn't make very good sense. Two reasons for this. First of all, it's a very strange scenario. You might do it, but why? If it was to put out a fire, you'd be talking about a flame that's quite small, so you would pour the coffee onto the flame. In what context would you pour coffee into the flame? Maybe if you threw your mug of coffee onto the bonfire. It's a pretty hard one to work out. Is there a better option here? Pour the coffee into the mug. And that makes good sense. Ladies and gentlemen, good sense. And so flame, even though you can make a grammatically valid sentence ending with flame, it is not the correct, it would not be the correct answer. Pour the coffee into the mug would be. Things I have not done here include writing the sentence out in full. If that's necessary for you to do this, then do it. But it's a use of time that you possibly can't afford in a real exam. Um, at the end, I do do... Hello there, at the end, I'm not sure what happened with your best email to you. Can copy it or send you a text for me a few times and then we all get a bit more relaxed than just a little brother. If... I don't know what that is, but if that's people writing song lyrics in the comments, please don't, because it just spams them up and then I can't see the questions that people ask. Um, ah, people... People who think they're being cool with, you know, um, Rick Roll references. This is so old hat. It is so old hat. This is something from like back when I was young. Um, it's not cool. It isn't. You're being uncool. That's the worst crime of all here. Okay, because everybody, almost everybody apart from you is cool in this channel. Um, <laughs> Wings how I fly, wish I knew I too. Oh, hang on. 
we've got more musical references here and they're coming out of the paper. But anyway, never mind. Um, um, wings, how I fly, wish, knew I too. How I wish, how I wish, knew, how I wish, fly, no, how I wish I, wings, no, how I wish I had wings, there's no had here. How I wish I knew to fly. We still got wings and how left. How I wish I knew how to fly. Let's check that we haven't double counted any words. How I wish I knew. Oh, hang on. How I wish I knew. We've double counted how. So we can't start with how. I wish I ah, I've done the wrong word. Sorry, it's the heat. I'll blame the heat. I wish I knew how to fly. And wings is the odd one out. So there you see that just by looking through and kind of getting a feel for the words, I started to see some connections. I put something together, but what I put together was wrong. Because I wanted to say, I wish I knew how to fly. And it didn't work because I double counted how. And then I had to think, actually, how is just strengthening the beginning of that. I can miss it out. So then I started with I instead, but with the same basic concept, and then I got there. Wings here has been put in as a kind of trick, because of course it's related to the idea of flying. So you might assume that it's um, integral to the sentence, even though it turns out not to be. Cheers. Three left. We're nearly there. Out me extra help, please. Extra help, please. Okay, but... Ex me extra help, out extra help please. So extra help please was the first word combination I thought of, but I want extra help please, but we don't have that option, okay? So that doesn't work. Um, you might start by asking please, it, please implies that this might be a request. So if you're requesting something, you often start with the verb. Give me your lunch money, says the bully. Help me extra please. No, that's not really good English. Help me out extra or help me out please. Help me out please. Um, of course these sentences don't contain punctuation so there isn't the comma before please. That's fine. Extra is our odd one out. Difficult malodorous question. Answer these two are. This is, sounds like Yoda. Um, okay. Difficult malodorous questions. Answer these two are. Difficult malodorous questions. I'm very suspicious of the word malodorous because it just doesn't fit. You may not know the word malodorous, but you're intelligent enough to all of you, all you viewers, um, all the thousands of people who would watch this, I'm convinced that every one of you is intelligent enough to say mal is often a prefix stuck on the beginning of a word. So what comes after it, mal? Odorous. Odorous, odor, smell is to do with smell. Okay, and if you've got a sense of what mal means, you'll recognise that this means bad smelling, even if you didn't know the word. Um, if you can get that, you'll immediately think this is likely to be the odd one out, because the rest seems to fit what questions that you might answer, which are difficult, and I can't work anyway, work out any way of sticking something to do with smell into that. So that might help you if you can work out malodorous. If you can't, you'll just step back and look at it a bit. Questions answer these two. Okay, answer, and we've got a verb are at the end. Um, so questions are difficult. That's a nice unit. That might well be in the final answer. Questions are difficult. These questions are difficult. These questions are difficult, but I still got three words left. These questions are difficult answer. These questions are difficult to answer. I have a sentence that makes good sense. So malodorous, indies, indies, indeed, is rejected. Well, cheese, landslide together and avocado go. I mean, you, yeah, you can sort of create a semblance of meaning just by putting on voices, but no. Okay, well, cheese, landslide together and avocado go. So here, you see cheese and avocado and you think these are likely to belong together. But then again, look at 17. We had wings and fly, and in fact, one of those was the word that we had to cross out. So these, I'm saying so too much. You have these initial instincts, but don't rely on them too much. Take them into account, but don't become obsessed with them. It could be that we have cheese and avocado in our sentence, or it could be that we don't. Cheese and avocado. If you're talking about two kinds of food, you might put it and. 
cheese and avocado, well, together and go. Now, cheese and avocado, I really need a verb by this point in the sentence. Cheese and avocado, where's our verb? It's go. Cheese and avocado go together. Cheese and avocado go together. Cheese and avocado landslide go together. If avocado landslide was, was a food stuff, I suppose that would go. I'm not aware of one. Cheese and avocado go together well, or even better, cheese and avocado go well together. Landslide is our odd one out. So I've shown you how to be very systematic with some earlier questions and approach them with a kind of pure logic. With these questions here, I'm showing you a kind of mix. We're using a kind of logical approach, but we're also relying a lot on intuition, looking at the words, trying to spot some initial combinations that go together, and then applying some a logical approach, but also, again, a lot of intuition, a lot of instinct, adding bits in, but also being prepared to mess with what we get or even completely reject it until we get the answer. And that's the best approach for this kind of thing. Don't just try and stare at them and get it completely by instinct because you might go wrong, you might double use a word or whatever, or you might try to include a word that isn't actually there. But also don't try and work it out as though it's a maths problem because you'll be at it all day. With these ones here, you can take a very logical approach to it. Very, very systematic checking things off until you get the answer. With these ones here, you can apply bits of logic saying, well, for example, after um, at the beginning of this word here, we almost certainly, no, actually, that wasn't the best example. Um, what about here? We have to have a vowel after the V. And so that's a logical thing. But really, you're relying very much on intuition for these. You're relying on more intuition than logic, because at the end of the day, you have to at some point go, oh, yeah, that's the word. That's what I need to fill in. And if you can't do that, you're going to be stuck. These ones at the top here, this was completely about logic. So we've got complete logic. We've got largely using logic. We've got a balance of logic and intuition. And then here we've got an overwhelmingly intuitive approach. So you have to use your mind in different ways uh, to talk in terms of kind of cod neurological cliche. You have to use different parts of your brain in, in, with different sort of in different combination, different balance as you do different kinds of reasoning questions. And ultimately, the people that, that, that do best will be the people who, yes, you have, but also can learn to engage and cultivate that kind of mental flexibility. Right, um, I'm skipping the tip of the week this time because I showed you that video about the 11 plus lifeline offer earlier. Um, so that's kind of my tip of the week. My tip of the week is look out for the video with the details of the offer and your special discount code, which will be published in the channel on Friday morning. Um, I'm going to skip right on to everybody's favourite mob piling. Uh, we've actually been going longer than I intended, 50 minutes now, so um, I'm going to take a few questions and not get bogged down too far. Um, Ramesh, Robert, my exams are getting closer and I am petrified. Um, what is the maximum mark to get Colchester Grammar School for girls? Um, uh, you need to distinguish between maximum and, I beg your pardon, maximum and minimum. Um, the maximum mark would be 100%. Uh, and that would pretty much guarantee you a place, I would hope. Uh, you mean what's the minimum mark that would get you in? But I've waffled around this a lot to say that I've got no idea. And there isn't a set mark to get you in. Yes, there might be a standardised score that's necessary that they announce in advance. But without going into the maths of this, that's meaningless. Because the only mark that really matters as far as you're concerned is what percentage. And that depends on the level of the exam and the level of the other candidates and what percentages they get. Uh, because let's say they have 100 places, you have to be in the top 100. It's a little, it's not as simple as that because you've got other things like catchment area and siblings and different criteria in different places. But you get the idea. Um, if you're petrified about the exam, okay, anyone who's familiar with this channel, just sit back and relax for a moment. I'm going to tell you something that I've said many times before, but I say it because it's one of the most important messages I give on this channel. Take a deep breath. The only reason to be worried about your 11 plus, the only reason that actually counts, that actually matters, away from pride and what your friends are doing and, you know, what your parents might think and whether you get the bribe that they promised you if you pass the exam and all that kind of rubbish. The only thing that actually matters about the 11 plus and whether you pass it is whether you go to a secondary school where you make a success of yourself and prepare for a bright future. That's the only thing that matters about the 11 plus. That's the only real reason for doing it, okay? 
Now, if you are somebody who is already turning out on a Tuesday evening after school to watch videos about doing the 11 plus, you are already in the elite. You are in that tiny fraction of people who are so dedicated, so hardworking, so motivated that you, all the people watching this, virtually without exception, are people who will do really well at secondary school, make the most of your ability and have a good and successful life. And therefore, in some ways, the people who are watching Easy 11 Plus are the people who need to worry least about whether they actually pass their 11 Plus exam, because you're going to do fine anyway. And I'm not just saying that to be nice, I really mean it. If you're motivated like this, yeah, maybe the exams go badly, maybe you've got a cold on the day, you're distracted and you don't get through the exam into the school that you want. And you go to, you know, um, you go to the local comprehensive school that everyone's been saying awful things about. You will be fine wherever you go to school. So do the be your best in the exams. Sure, maybe things will be even better for you if you go to this fantastic school where they give you all the extra help. But at the end of the day, you will be fine. So do not be scared about your 11 plus. Just relax. You're here and that already means that you are one of the really, really good ones. At least when it comes to your academics. Right. Uh, do you have any books? I have quite a few books. But if you mean, do I publish books? Then yes. Go to the RSL Educational website and you will see lots of books there. There's a shop section. You'll see them all listed and you can download uh, samples from lots of them as well. There's a link in the video description. Go into the video description. You'll find links to loads of useful things. Um, what kind of subject is most important? Uh, there's no answer to that. Uh, it depends what you do with it, what you do with your life. Um, if you mean about the 11 plus, it depends which schools you're applying to, but it also depends what your strengths and weaknesses are. You need to work out what to study and what to focus on based on where you need to work hardest to pull yourself, pull yourself up to speed. So in some ways you could say that your weaker subjects are most important for you to study, but I don't really believe that's true because it's just as important that you perform really well in your strong subjects and get really good marks there and make the most of them. So all your subjects are important. Sounds like a platitude, but it's really true. Just work steadily across them. What you're already good at, get better, but make sure that you're looking at the things you're weak at and pulling them up to level. Do you teach at a school? I do not. Once upon a time, I taught at Christ Hospital School, but that was a long time ago. Um, I don't teach anywhere now, actually, I, apart from on YouTube. Um, Robert, how can you get better at VR when the exam is coming soon? I've just, you've just watched an entire video about that, Uma. What else can I say? I've just given a squizillion tips. Um, oh, going back to the question, do I teach? Of course, the other thing I do is that through 11 plus lifeline, I do voice marking of work. So I have my microphone, dum, 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 dum. And so boom, boom, boom for you guys, isn't it? Um, that's probably the most annoying moment in the video, hitting the microphone blah, 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 as I pull it around anyway. Um, and I go for your work and I put um, comments on individual words and lines. And I say in this sentence, you could do this differently for this question. Uh, you could get two more marks if you change it around a little bit. Have you considered describing this in that way? And so on and so forth. And that is a kind of teaching that I do do. So um, if you're interested in that, of course, I'm running the 11 plus lifeline sale from Friday to Sunday, the big autumn sale, or I'm calling it the September sale, although it's not as I do one every month, not at all. I haven't done one for, I don't think I've done one since last year, at least quite a long time. Uh, anyway, go there and you'll get a big discount on that marking service I've spoken about. And yes, before you ask, it is me who does the marking. I don't outsource it to other people. Um, um, various people saying they're stressed about their exams. I just refer you back to what I said earlier on um, about that. Um, do, 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 uh, how long is a good time to revise? I'm just a bit low to repeat answers I've given in loads of my recent videos, but just to quickly give an answer, I guess it's relevant to a lot of people right now. The main thing I would say is that, yes, you've learned about maths, you've learned about comprehension, you've learned about reasoning, you might have learned about creative writing, you've learned lots of things preparing for the 11 plus, but there's one thing that you have learned more than any of those things. And that thing is that you have learned how you learn best. You are now the expert on how you, that's you individually, each of you who's watching, most effectively learn things. And so now's the time to use that knowledge. Your exams are coming up. And so you need to think, how would I, knowing me, most effectively learn? How will I most effectively learn in these days? How much time off should I give myself? 
How much sport should I go out and play? How much time should I spend watching the TV? And how much time should I spend in front of the page working hard? How much time should I spend doing new questions? How much time should I spend reviewing old notes? At the end of the day, you'll have had advice from so many people over the years you've been preparing, or the months, but now is a time when, when you are the expert, more than anybody else, more than your teachers, more than your parents. So take responsibility. Take ownership of your own learning. That's a horrible cliched phrase. Anyway, um, and you can decide now how best to revise. Have the kind of courage to do that. Um, the creator is going to Christ's hospital. Their exams are in 29 days. Good luck. I very much hope you get in. Um, Omar says, get CGP books. How dare you, Omar? Get RSL educational books and 11 plus lifeline. <laughs> Only joking. Look, working with books from a range of different publishers is a very sensible approach and it will give you a nice broad preparation and I would encourage you to do that. Um, do, 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 do. Um, what if I fail? You'll be just fine, as I explained before. Um, Robert, I've been going to my new grammar school. It's really good. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'm very glad you're happy there and uh, lovely to see a loyal channel member back. I think that means you've just started there um, and I hope you're having a fun time and making some really good friends. Um, Anna Puma, this was a great lesson. This is my very first live lesson, virtual hug, and this was very fun. Thank you. That makes me real happy. Uh, virtual hug back. Uh, wonderful to have you here and I hope I'll see you again next Tuesday at 6 p.m. I'm about to wrap up. What time is my class, please? Ask Nathan. Uh, your class is Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock with Easy 11 Plus. <laughs> okay. I'm going to call it a day there. Apologies to people um, whose questions I haven't answered. I'm seeing a lot of questions here that a very simple Google search would answer, such as what 11 plus subjects are there and that, and that kind of thing. Um, so don't just panic that you don't know them because I haven't answered them. Go out there, do a little bit of research online and you'll get there. I'm going to give a quick shout to Dimitri um, to see whether he will come back and say goodbye. He probably won't because he's wise to this game. I'm just going to stop the microphone for a second while I shout. Now, he knows that if I'm in the kitchen and I shout his name, he's going to get a treat. But he knows if I'm here, I'm just going to manhandle him and hold him up to the camera. Um, and then he'll probably go poof across my face like at the end of that video. Except he doesn't because he's not here. Oh, well, it's been fantastic to have you here. Check out the links in the video description. But most importantly, guys, this week, if you're watching it live or you're watching it very soon after live, it's the big 11 plus Lifeline September sale coming up. I won't be doing another one for many, many months, uh, certainly until next year. I won't be doing a proper sale uh, that's public like this. Um, I might do odd little promotions, but nothing of this sort and probably nothing with offers of this size. It's going to be a really, really big discount to get you into your 11 plus preparation. So uh, come back here on Friday morning, check out the video. It'll be another very short video in which I announce the offer, tell you what the discount code is, tell you what the benefit is, tell you how much you're getting off. It's going to be a lot. Uh, so do come back on Friday morning, have a look for that video, blah, blah, and waffling. Fantastic to have you here. Have a lovely dinner and a nice relaxing evening. And if you've got your exams coming up, I wish you the very best of luck. Bye-bye.